everyone. Today we're learning about polymer clay. Here's a couple of tools that you'll need with you for your polymer clay lesson. You'll need your polymer clay, your rolling pin, some clay tools for sculpting. These come in plastic or wooden. A skewer which is handy for making holes. It's a good idea to also have with you a ruler to measure the thickness of your clay before baking. You'll need a hard flat surface. I often do my polymer clay on a placemat from Kmart. These are only $1.50, easy to wipe down. And my best tip and trick is fragrance free baby wipes. These are great to keep your hands clean in between different colours. Reds and oranges in particular will get all over your hands and they'll mix into your other polymer clay colours. So it's always good to have some wipes on hand. First I'm going to show you how we make a brand new colour by mixing together. So you'll take two colours of your choice I'm going to use white and some turquoise. And we're going to condition our clay first. This is a very important step for any of your polymer clay projects. So to condition our clay, we're simply going to knead it between our fingers, squeezing and pressing it in together. You can roll it in a ball between your hands. This step is very important because it will get rid of any air bubbles in your clay and it softens it to make it easier to sculpt and work with and will make your clay less brittle after it's been baked. So now that our clay is conditioned it's nice and soft. We're going to take each colour between our hands and roll a snake. You can place it down on your board and continue rolling. We do that with both colours. And then we're going to place them next to each other. Squish them together and twist and make a nice long spiral. Once you've made your spiral, you're simply going to squish all your clay together in a ball and keep kneading it until your colors have merged and turned into a brand new colour. We need to use our muscles for this one, squishing in with our hands. You can leave your clay at this point and it will be a marbled looking effect. Or we can keep kneading and rolling and squishing until we have a brand new colour. You can make pastel colours out of your clay by adding white to any colour. So I've put together the white and the aqua and I've made a pastel turquoise aqua colour. Next I'm going to show you how to make a marbled bead. Again we're going to condition our clay first. Now that I've conditioned my clay, I'm going to roll each piece into a nice long snake.
If you would like one colour to be more prominent than the others, you can make a thicker snake. So my turquoise is a little bit thicker than my white. I will see more turquoise in my marbled bead. Now that we have our snakes, we're going to push them together and then pick them up and twist. Twisting our long snake all the way to the end. And then we're going to simply make a coil. So turning our snake in, so it almost makes a lollipop. And now for the fun part, we're going to squish it all together. Squishing in with your hands. And then roll another snake. You can see the colours already starting to mix together and make some interesting patterns. And we're going to twist for a second time. Make another coil. And then roll into a ball. So just between your two palms, rolling round and round in circular motions. And we've got some really cool patterns coming out. Now what I like to do is pull apart a piece, however big you think your bead is going to be. And we simply roll it into a ball until it's nice and smooth around all the edges. And then we're going to take our skewer Place our ball down on the board, maybe squish him down a little bit and put the skewer directly through the centre. It's a good idea to twist your skewer around, pick him up, push him through the other side. Now it's always a good idea to turn your bead over and push back through the other side. When you're making a hole for your beads, make sure that you make a good, decent sized hole a bit bigger than you think you might need because when the clay bakes, it will actually shrink a tiny bit and your hole might close up a little. So there you have your very first bead. And you can use that to put on a necklace, a bracelet, or maybe even a keychain. Moving on, we're going to show you the slab technique and some other fun projects.